Alright, here we go. Okay, right, welcome along Lisa, thanks for coming in today. Um, so just to go over um, the purpose of today again, we, we spoke earlier but the, the purpose of today is just to gather some information from yourself relating to um, your level of fitness, um, your current health status, as well your likes and your dislikes. Mm -hmm. We'll do a couple of fitness tests um, based on some of your goals and then I'll be able to take all that information and prescribe you a training program that you can work on um, in the next few weeks, probably for the next six weeks. Right. Okay, the session today should take around 20-25 minutes. Um, the information that I'm going to collect today we will be keeping here at the centre. Um, we'll be keeping it in a, a safe place. Um, if there's anything that's flagged up and um, I need to pass any information on to maybe a, a specialist um, or a colleague that can deal with a particular um, condition or whatnot, then I'll, I'll seek your permission beforehand. Um, but everything here will remain confidential um, and yeah, we won't be using any of that information for anything else. Great. Cool with that? Yes. Sweet. Okay, so let's just start with our um, physical activity readiness questionnaire. So uh, there's just uh, seven questions just to find a little bit of information um, about yourself. So uh, we've got your information down here, if we can just double check, that's that's your name spelled yep. correctly there, yeah, that's your age, Yes. cool, your details in case we need to get in touch, that is your phone number, Yes. Well. and your, your current email address, yep. yeah, and we've got your next of kin as well, perfect, okay, so the physical activity readiness questionnaire, just finding some information um, to see if um, you're fit and able to do exercise um, and if not we can take the necessary action. So a couple of questions here, question number one, has your doctor ever said uh, that you've got any heart conditions and you should only do physical activity by uh, recommended by a doctor? Perfect. Do you feel any pains in your chest when you do any physical activity? Never. Excellent. In the past month, have you ever had uh, chest pains um, while not doing physical activity? Oh, no, no. no. Okay. Do you ever lose your balance because of dizziness or ever lose consciousness? No. no. Do you have a bone or joint problem that could be made worse due to physical activity? No. No. Is your doctor currently prescribing any drugs or any medication for your blood pressure or any heart conditions? No. And do you know of any other reason why you should not take part in physical activity? No. No. Excellent. Okay, so that's nose there, that's perfect. I'm just going to sign here. Yeah, today's day is the first day, 11, 19. If I can just get a little signature from yourself. Super, excellent. So I'm just going to stick that to the side. Uh, okay, the next thing is uh, informed consent. So. Basically, this is just information um, about the benefits of doing exercise. What we've already discussed some, so benefits to your health, benefits to you physically as well, benefits to doing activities that you're currently doing yep. or within your hobbies. But there's also some risks to it as well. So if I can just get you to have a little read through that, some of the potential risks. The benefits are below, and if you're happy with that information, just on the back, just a little signature and a date would be great. Happy with that information? I am. Excellent. So, Park is great, happy with you doing exercise, etc., which is great. It means that we can do some of our dynamic tests, so some of our more physical tests. Today, we'll also do a, a number of static tests just to get some measurements, just to get a, a, um, a little bit of a picture of how your health is sitting as well. All right. So, before we start doing that, we're just going to run through this consultation. It's going to allow me to get information about yourself, the type of thing that you're doing, the type of activities you're currently doing or previously done, um, any um, previous experiences in the gym, whether it's equipment that you like, um, whether you dislike it, we'll try to avoid that within your training program, um, how active you are at work, out with work, etc. So we can start to again get an understanding of what you're doing and, and how an exercise training program can support that. Okay. So um, take the information there. 
Excellent. So, uh, just a little bit of description of your, your current lifestyle. Um, so, we'll, we'll start with hobbies. What, what hobbies are you currently doing? How active are you within um, your hobbies? Hobbies would probably be my uh, circuit class that I go to okay. three times a week. Excellent. And what type of circuit? Like what type training. Of, so, so it's high, high intensity. intensity. Excellent. And, and exercises that you do within that? Is um, they change it every week. So it can be body weight exercises, yeah. can be barbells, kettlebells, ropes. It's a very big, and there's cardio equipment as well, so rowing machines. and. Excellent. So you're getting a good variety through your, your circuit class yeah. at the moment. Have you got any other hobbies? That um, I run, but not as often as I used to. What kind of distances are you doing running? Uh, 5 to 10k. Excellent. All right, let's think about your your work then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so occupation. So what is it that you do? I'm a teacher. Excellent. So teacher. And how active are you within your job? Um, you're on your feet a lot. So I, you know, teach a practical vocational subject. So I'm up and about yeah. in the classroom. Um, don't get too much time sitting down at my desk. Um, so yeah, I'm on my feet a lot, especially when I'm doing my circuit class in the morning as well. So not much time spent sitting, which is great, okay, that just means that we're moving more, we're getting um, steps up and mm -hmm. whatnot, so we're, we're doing daily activity throughout as well, which is super. What about um, time spent with family? Is time spent with family um, generally in the house, or are you out and about, um, are you doing activities? Out and about, we're not, we don't like to be indoors too much. Me and my partner, we like to go out for walks hikes and do activities and if I go and see family um, back home again not too much time indoors. It's nice to be indoors but better to be out. And what about um, just generally like foods, um, do you do you track what you eat? Are you bothered about what you I've eat? Started, yeah, I've started tracking but that's only really um, better Monday to Friday yeah. when I'm at work and I take my food to work, but yeah. at the weekends it's, if we're out, you might be eating out or getting food in with friends and family, so at the weekends it's um, not as controlled. Yeah, which is not too bad, that's fine, I mean, you, the amount of activity you're doing through the through the week, it seems like you're pretty active, if you're controlling what you're eating throughout the week as well, then I wouldn't be too worried about what's been eaten um, at the weekend. Mm -hmm unless you're going crazy and binging and, and whatnot as well. So, um, you've given me a lot of good information about your lifestyle presently. I'm going to start to break that down and get a little bit more information on how often you're active, the type mm -hmm. of intensity that you're doing. Yep. Um, I've got information on type, so I'll, I'll fill that in. So you do some running, you do hip training, and how how often are you training then through the week? What's so your frequency of training? Five, five times a week. Five days per week. Okay, what about intensity? So would you say um, it's high? Well, you've, the, you've the, said the, 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 the circuits yeah. is high intensity, but I'd say my running's more kind of steady state. Okay, so maybe moderate. Yeah. So you're moderate to high, yeah. And, and how long would you spend doing a session? Um, classes are 45 minutes and then runs, It would if it's 5k it's half an hour and then 10k would be an hour. Okay, so you're around 30 to 60 minutes. 30 to 60 minutes. All right. Think back previously, so that's what you're doing just now. Yeah. Think previously, um, what was your exercise history been like? I used to run more. So, the times. so running would, be three, would have been three times a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I was more in the gym as opposed to the circuit classes. I was only maybe doing one or two a week. So were you just doing, doing lift, lifting weights? Yeah, just or making my own little circuits, but probably wasn't as intense. Yeah, so intensity was probably more moderate, moderate across the week. Yeah. Excellent. How long would you spend either doing the running or doing the... Um, I was probably training. about 45 to an hour. I was running slightly longer distances. Excellent. So you've got a good history of exercise. Uh, you probably have some good knowledge of different exercises as well, especially if you've been going to like circuit classes where people are prescribing stuff. 
Um, so excellent, good. I think we've got a good starting base there, certainly. Um, all right, so because you've done um, or got some good knowledge about or experience mm -hmm. with training, you'll know what things that you like and what you dislike. Yeah. So let's start off with things that you like. What, what type like. of exercises do um, you like? I like kettlebells. Yeah. Um, like, what else do I like? I like anything sort of body weight TRX. Okay, so you like body weight training. Or core training. Yeah, like training. Like training core, super. What about like, because in our gym we've got a variety of CV equipment, and yeah. CV equipment uh, is going to be good for maintaining or improving body composition, it's going to be good to improve your aerobic fitness, which will help you with your running, mm -hmm. also help you with your constant moving and throughout the day for work, yeah. etc. Uh, we've got a treadmill, we've got cross training, we've got a, an upright bike. Yeah. Is there any of those equipment that you, you wouldn't want to see in your programme? Um, I don't necessarily like a cross trainer. I don't okay. find it, um, I don't feel like it's intense enough or that I yeah. get anything from it. Excellent, so don't like the cross trainer. What about the treadmill? Treadmill, I don't like just because, I think I just prefer running outdoors. Okay. I don't mind doing sprints on a treadmill, but I don't want to stay on a treadmill yeah. for too long. So perhaps a sprint. Any areas of the body that you enjoy training more than others? Uh, I enjoy legs. Legs and glutes, hips. Any areas that you don't like training? I forgot. Shoulders. Okay, this is shoulder training. Any reason why? Um, I just find it tough. Anything overhead is always harder. Okay, so it's maybe more the motivation side of things. So we could potentially look at putting a, a shoulder exercise or two in your training program. Um, but we can start to work on that, so we can maybe look at specific rep ranges mm -hmm. um, or specific levels of weight lifted. Um, maybe not making it overly challenging to start, but gradually stepping it up there. Okay. Um, because it's, it's quite important, you know, shoulders and whatnot, and we do a lot of lifting, mm -hmm. etc. And the shoulders is, is an area that we potentially might undertrain or we don't utilise that much as well. So it's good to have some exercises in there. Um, it just allows me to see how we can put that in there so that you okay. enjoy it and start yeah. to start to like it. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, just this little section here is uh, parking and informed consent. That's been explained. Yes, did the client answer yes? No, you didn't. So clean bill of health. And able to do exercise. Excellent. So just thinking about some of the things that you've said and some of your general fitness tests. So I'm going to do a cardiovascular test with you, I'm going to do a flexibility test with you, and I'm going to do a muscular endurance test with you as well. Those are three of the four main components or um, health-related mm -hmm. fitness components. Okay. Um, thinking about you moving around a lot within within work, um, but also um, building up a little bit of stamina. Um, I think that the, the Harvard Step Test would be a good test to do. Um, when we get to it, it'll be a five minute test, and then we'll be testing your um, wrist and heart rate every minute for three minutes, and, and that helps me get some, um, some scores which I can compare against our normative values. Sit and reach, we'll do that test there as well. The sit and reach is a good test to, to gauge overall flexibility right through the posterior chain, so through the lower back, through the hamstrings and the calves. Um, again, which having good levels of flexibility, especially for your running, yeah. um, is, is going to be pretty important because it's going to help reduce potentially injuries, which can be quite common on, on distance running as well, especially through the calf, through the ankles, um, and, and knees and whatnot as well. Okay, and uh, your muscular fitness, I think we'll do a push-up test, okay, so the push-up tests will be a test just to see how many push-ups um, that you can successfully complete mm -hmm. unbroken, um, that'll give me a good indication of your upper body strength, more specifically your muscular endurance, right. all right. Um, so yeah, but before we do that, what we'll do is we'll do some static tests, okay, so we're going to take things like your heart rate, we'll get your blood pressure, we'll work out what your BMI is, but also your, your waist to hip ratio, because uh, waist to hip ratio and BMI give us a, a better um, overall picture. Okay. Alright, so let's start with your wrist and heart rate, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it from your pulse, alright, um, I'm just going to get a wee stopwatch on there. 
Okay, so you've not done any exercise before you've come along today. No. You've not had any coffee or anything like not that. Yet, no. Today, not good. Excellent. All right. Um, ideally, we would take this first thing in the morning for three consecutive days and then find an average. All right. But um, for the purpose of today, we'll, we'll see where we're sitting okay. at. All right. So I'm just going to find your, your pulse and your wrists. If I can. Ah, there we go. Okay, perfect. Oh, I'm just struggling here. There we go. Okay. So just relax. Perfect. Okay. So that's well done. I'm just going to times that by four. Excellent. So once we've got all the results, I'll talk to you through okay. um, and then explain how we're doing. All right. So, um, so your resting heart rate just gives me a good indication of how healthy your heart is as well, uh, how strong it's pumping. Blood pressure, okay, we're going to test your blood pressure. We'll check it on the left arm here if you want to swing your seat just around a little bit. Okay, this is going to give us a, an indication of um, the pressure running through your arteries when your heart beats and also when it rests as well. Um, so, if we just slide that up through your arm. If you just want to turn your wrist like that. You had your blood pressure taken before? Um, yeah, at the doctors, but not in a, maybe a year ago. Okay, so just a reminder that your um, the cuff's going to get tight around your arm, okay, it'll inflate, um, and then it'll start to deflate as well, okay. Just relax through the whole process, okay, just nice steady breathing and whatnot. Okay, so we're going to go and take your height and your weight. If you want to step over, um, we'll jump onto the the scales first. So I take my shoes off. Yes, please take your shoes off. Excellent. If you just want to step onto the scales. Perfect. And then if you just want to step over here, yeah, that's it, just facing away. Now just stand up nice and tall. And the very last test, if you just want to come over, is so those two those two tests there they'll allow me to get your BMI. So your BMI is just basically um, your checking how how heavy you are mm -hmm. for your your height and, and seeing if you're your correct weight for your height as well. I'm going to check and do our um, our waist to hip yep. measurement as well. The waist to hip measurement is a good test. It's going to allow us to see. Um, how much adipose tissue, okay, you may be stored around the trunk there um, because research suggests that um, if we've got a lot of adipose tissue carried around the trunk then we're more likely to, to be prone to, to some like, um, health concerns, okay. So, 
If I can just get you, first of all, to locate your belly button. Excellent. I'm just going to wrap it like so. Take me a couple of attempts to get this, Lisa. Okay, so let's do some of our health tests. Um, so, like I said, we're, we'll start with your um, cardiovascular tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our step tests. Yeah, the step test duration, okay, is going to be five minutes. Yeah, you're going to step on and off this step right here 30 times per minute. Okay. Now, the metronome is going to dictate the speed, so every time you hear the beep, you're going to step one foot on, on, then off, off. I'll demonstrate that before we get started. Okay. After the five minutes, or if you lose the rhythm for 15 seconds, we'll stop the test, we'll sit you down. We'll right. wait for one minute, then we'll find your pulse. We'll take your, your pulse for 30 seconds, and we'll get the score. And then we'll do that in two minutes, and we'll do that in three minutes, and then we'll be able to work it out, and right. that'll give us a, an indication of your cardiovascular fitness. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool, so you've got your trainers on there. Perfect. We're just going to check a little bit of health and safety. Maybe we don't bump our heads. So we're slightly. Got a bit of room. There. So I'll let you hear the metronome. Just a little quick run through just now, <laughs> just so you see if you can get that rhythm. Okay. So just when you're in. Alright, 
that's not going to take me five minutes. So, uh, like I said, yeah. okay, up, up, down, down. Yep. 30 steps per second, uh, per minute, okay? And then from there, we'll be able to get an indication of your uh, cardiovascular fitness. So, I will let you start whenever you feel ready, Lisa. Okay. I'll get the stopwatch ready. Yeah? Yeah. So, just when you feel ready, yeah. you can um, you can get yourself started. Okay. Ready, three, two, one. Just holding the rhythm, just holding the rhythm, keep it going. Just relax. Okay, another 30 seconds and start recording the thing. So it's going to be the last time.
So we've got your score there. All right, we're going to do the sit and reach next. So if you could take your trainers off, that would be super. Okay, so your sit and reach is a flexibility test, like I said earlier. It's a test that's going to um, give us a, a bit of an idea about the flexibility down, right the way down the back of your body. Okay, so if you have a look here, I'll stick this all on so we've got a little bit more space. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do here, all right, we're going to use the ruler. Yeah, we're going to sit down, you'll have your shoes off obviously. You're going to extend your, your legs, okay, and we're not going to bend the legs. We're going to take your hands up, all right, take a deep breath in, exhale, and you're just going to push the ruler away, yeah, keeping the legs straight, no pushing or shoving of the, the ruler, okay. Yeah. We'll take your score three times, we'll add them all up, we'll divide it by three, we'll get an average okay. of your flexibility. All right. Very last test, Lisa. It's going to be our muscular endurance tests. So I'll just do it in this little space right here. Okay. So it's upper body tests. Uh, we're going to check your your endurance for your upper body now. We're going to do um, an alternative method of doing this, as opposed to being on the toes, we'll do this on the knees, okay, so I'll, I'll show you how I want you to get set up. When you set up so your hands are wider than your shoulders, yeah, start on your knee, on your toes, and then just drop your knees down, okay, okay. we're going to make sure that your back's nice and long, abs are braced, and you're going to drop your chest down, roughly to about elbow height, but so you get your upper arms and your elbows, uh, upper arms parallel to the ground, elbows at 90 degrees. And you're going to push up, okay? Yep. If you need to take a break, you can only take a break in this position. Right. All right, you can't lift your hands or move from here, and then you need to continue to go. Okay. All right, we'll see how many push ups that we can get, and um, then we can check how we can prepare for that. Okay. Happy with that? Yes. Cool, so if you want to come down, get yourself set up, position, so start on your toes, and then just drop your knees straight down. Excellent, good push up position. And you can get started when you're ready, Lisa. Okay. Just keep your toes down if you can. Just all good. Cool. Well done, great effort, that was super. Okay. All right, so if you just bear with me two wee seconds, I'm just going yeah. to quickly Throw together some calculations. Um, so.
Oh, okay. Okay, so certainly, um, so this section here, do we think that you need to be referred to someone else? No, uh, no referral required. Client's readiness to par participate, so you, you're quite happy to get going with a, a training programme. I think a training programme is definitely going to complement the other um, the other methods of training that you're doing as well. I don't think that we want to be having you training in the gym all too often because you're doing quite a lot of volume as it is just now, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but certainly within the winter months, the, the amount of running that you're going to be doing is going to be reduced, so you'll yeah. probably be doing your circuits. And we could look at trying to get you into the gym two to three times per week. Do you think okay. that would be achievable? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so let's compare you, um, and let, let's see where you're at, and then and then we'll get a little bit of an indication of what we're going to do training plan wise. So I'm just going to pull up my normative tests uh, values. Sorry. So your resting heart rate, which was this one here, we had you, and and then around um, uh, 48 there. Okay. So if you have a little look here for females, okay, we've got your age category right here and um, we were sitting perfect, so really, really good, okay, mm -hmm. rest and heart rate, all right, so nothing to worry about, about the heart, your heart's nice and strong, so we're in the yeah, excellent category, okay, your blood pressure here is 122 over 74, so if we compare, and you see here, so the 122 is the systolic, that's the pressure, um, during the, the pumping of the heart through the arteries, so that'll be in around here, and 74 is here, so your blood pressure is ideal. Ideal BP, excellent. Okay, so your next one was your BMI, so let me just get my body mass index score. So, yeah, 20, 24 we worked out, which is great, so anything between 18 to that 24 score, that's going to be a, an ideal score that we're looking for. So you're in the, the healthy bracket there as well. And your waist to hip ratio as well. So anything below 0 0.8 for a female is, is going to be really, really good. Yeah, if we just compare, if I just get my norms tables out for that. Okay, female in here. All right. So, yeah, we're sitting at, sitting at moderate there. So, yeah, nothing to worry about with regards to that. Okay. All right, let's have a little look at your cardiovascular tests. So, if we go for our push up tests, yeah, we've got your age category right here. You managed to achieve 31. Okay, so anything from 25 to 39 is going to be good. Yeah, so excellent. We're, we're in that good category, but we certainly could um, look at improving that. So mm -hmm. that's where that upper body strength. Yeah. Okay, so maybe within the training program, our focus would maybe be some types of push exercises, okay. either pushing via the chest or pushing with the shoulders so we can get that upper body strength um, improved. Okay. Um, your sit and reach tests right here. Okay, so we got an average of 18. Yeah, for a female, anything over 15 is excellent. So we've got some good flexibility. Not to say that we're, we're going to leave it at that, so we'll continue yeah. to work on that. We'll certainly get you doing some, some stretching in your cool down. Yeah. yeah, maybe for a longer period of time, which is going to improve your overall flexibility as well. Um, and your cardiovascular tests, which is the last one. Test here. Okay, you were sitting in around 73, so we're on the high average, all right? So not bad, but not absolutely amazing. Yeah. So again, something that we can work on, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we talked about CV machines and some things that you disliked. What we could do is we could get you maybe prescribed on something like the Stepmaster, okay. yeah, which is going to help with, um, with this type of test as well, but overall, and your, your um, aerobic endurance too. Okay, so if I just note down some things program wise, look at the Stepmaster, we'll look at upper body push exercises for shoulder and chest, yeah, maintain flexibility work potentially with some PNA. 
Alright. And then I'll try and balance that program. I'm also looking at lower body exercises yeah. in there as well. Okay, so just to, just to, to finalise this, in terms of goal setting, um, so creating, creating a goal, goal for yourself, I would say within the next six weeks, so we'll get you booked in for an appointment in six weeks' time. Okay. All right. You'll come in next week and we'll, we'll go through your uh, actual training programme. But what I would imagine, and um, if you're not too happy with this, then, uh, then let me know. Um, but we could look at trying to improve yeah, our step tests yeah. score. Okay, so improve steps. Okay, measurable. We'll try and get your score from around 73, something a bit more achievable. So we'll look at aiming to go to 70. Right. All right, on, on, the average, on the average score, which I think is quite realistic. It's not a, a huge jump. Okay, I do think it's going to also be relevant to what you're looking to achieve in terms of your overall aerobic fitness. And like I said, we'll aim to do that for your next appointment, which is going to be in six weeks. So that should be our, our smart goal for the, for the next six weeks. Okay. Are you quite happy with Sounds that? Good, yeah. Excellent. Have you got any questions about any of the information or anything that we've no, conducted no. today? Perfect. So like I said, next week we'll get you in, we'll go through your training programme, we'll talk about sets and reps and technique for the exercises and then that'll be you up and running and then in six weeks time we'll come back we'll conduct these tests again and we'll see how we're progressing great cool with that excellent have a great day thank, thank you, you.